Hello everyone and welcome to the Widget Basics Lecture. As always, there's a corresponding notebook, which you can find in the GUI or GUI folder. Once you click that, you'll see the available notebooks and we'll be working on the second one, Widget Basics. Again, it should be noted that the actual widgets cannot be rendered either in GitHub or NB Viewer. You have to download or type up the notebook yourself in order to see the widgets. So, in this lecture, we're going to continue to build off our understanding of Interact and Interactive to begin building out useful widgets. So what are widgets exactly? Widgets are event Python objects that have a representation in the browser. So like a controller or a slider, um, a text box, we've seen this before. So to use the widget framework, what you have to say from IPy widgets import, and in this case, I'm just going to import uh, asterisks or everything. Okay, so you can use these widgets to build interactive GUIs for your notebooks, and you can also use widgets to synchronize stateful and stateless information between Python and JavaScript. And I'll show you what we mean by that in just a second. So widgets can be called by their own display representation. So if you remember from earlier, we could call um, integer slider, and this was generated automatically using the interact, but you can call them individually from IPy widgets. In this case, we've imported everything, so I can just call it like this. And remember, it comes with its own um, possible arguments. Whoops. So here is a slider widget that represents an integer bound by a minimum maximum. So you can check out the Jupyter Notebook from earlier, and later on we'll have a list of widgets that you can check out for exactly what arguments you can pass into them. Um, another thing you can do, as mentioned earlier, is press X here to close out that widget. So I also want to mention, as we discussed earlier, you can specifically display the widget. So you could say, for instance, if we import from IPython, dot display import display I can actually set a variable equal to int slider and then display that slider and it'll work so we saw a little bit about that in the earlier lecture but something that's interesting to note that is if we call this twice so if I say display w and then call display w again and I start editing one, you'll notice that they're both in sync. And this is because they're connected since we're displaying the same integer slider. And I'll do one more to drive the point home. So right now when I change any one of these sliders, I'm just displaying w. And so each of these cells is going to display w. And we can actually close the widget by calling the close method on it. So I could do something like this and close all those widgets. And if I wanted to delete that output, I could just press exit there to hide any output. So all of the IPython widgets share a similar naming scheme. To read the value of a widget, you can query what's known as its value property. So I could say, if I display W, remember that's our, whoops, since I closed it, I have to reset it. So I'm going to say w equals int slider. And now I can display it. So we see here. So that widget is going to have a value property. And I can actually call it like so. And it will tell me what the current value is at. So notice how I move the slider here to 22. And now if I call the value on that w, it sets it to or puts out 22. But I can also set its value property. So I can say value is equal to, let's say in this case, 50. Run that cell and notice how the slider changed for that. So in addition to value, most widgets share um, keys, description, disabled, and visible. So to jump to the notebook to show you this, they share keys, description, disabled, and visible. So regardless of what the widget type actually is, they should have these four properties to them. So if we call keys, 
on that variable w, we notice we get a bunch of various keys that have to do with the integer slider. And we'll go over these a little later. A lot of them have to do with styling, so you can actually style this slider to look um, however you want it. From the border size to the font size, color, um, etc. Remember, you can also set max and min. So there's a lot of uh, different things you can change here. And we'll get to that in the styling lecture. There's also a shorthand for setting the initial values of widget properties. So while creating a widget, you can set some or all of the initial values of that widget by defining them as keyword arguments in the widget's constructor. So for example, another widget that we've encountered is that text box widget, which is just text. And I can enter the value as hello world. And then I can input disabled equals true. So note, if I put disabled equals true, I can no longer edit this. But if I put it as false, then I can come in and edit whatever is in that text box. So let's go ahead and now move on to thinking about how we can link two similar widgets. So you, need, you may need to display the same value two different ways, so you need two different widgets. And instead of attempting to manually synchronize the values of these two widgets, you can use what's known as a traitlet link function. So you can say from traitlets import link, and I'm gonna say a is equal to a float text widget, and b is equal to a float slider widget. And if I call the display on both A and B, I can then use the link to link them together. So I can use it with this syntax. I can say my link equals link and then pass tuples. And on the first one I'm going to fill out A with a string value and B with a string value and whoops this should have been trait let's there we go and now you can see they're gonna be linked together so what did we do here I said from trait let import link set the two similar widgets that you want to link together call the display on both of them, and then in order to link them, you can say link and pass a tuple of the name of the widget and what you actually want to link. In this case, I just want to link the value. And there I can move it around and you can see that they're linked. So you can actually unlink them as well. So I can say my link and call unlink method on it. And now you'll notice that they're unlinked. So as I move this slider, nothing changes in that text box. So you should now begin to have a general idea of what's possible with the widgets and how they can interact with each other. Don't worry if you're confused about how to actually know what to call or what widgets to do. That will be further explained along in the widgets list lecture because there's a lot of details there which you probably just have to look up as you need them. But for right now, the thing to get out of this lecture is just widget basics in general. That they each have names, you can call on them, you can set them as a variable and display them by importing display from ipython.display. You can call their values, call keys on them, and then you can see the various properties they have, which we'll learn about later on how to edit those. And again, you can be specific on some of these by passing parameters such as disabled in the text function. Again, we'll learn more about other parameters you can pass in future lectures. And then lastly, you can say from traitlets import link and that will allow you to link similar widgets together. In this case, we linked a float text with a float slider and passed in tuples. First argument was the variable that contained that widget or remember that box object and then the second one was the value we wanted to link together. 
and then we can unlink them by calling the unlink method on that variable name. All right, so that's it for widget basics. In the next lecture, we'll learn about widget events, further build our understanding of what's possible. Really, these early lectures in this portion of the GUI section is just to show you what's possible. Um, later on, you'll be able to implement them yourselves. Okay, so next is widget events. I will see you at the next lecture.